But minorities not only have worse health, they get sick at younger ages, have more severe illness, and die sooner than whites. I'll give you a few quick studies to give you a snapshot of that pattern. Breast cancer is one of the diseases that doesn't fit the general pattern, where minorities actually have lower rates in terms of new cases of breast cancer in a given year than white women. By the way, poor women also have lower rates of breast cancer in a given year than middle class women. However, although they're less likely to get the disease in general, black women are more likely to have a higher rate of breast cancer incidence under the age of 40, documenting the fact that when this population gets the disease, they're dramatically more likely to get it at a very young age. And other research suggests that both for African Americans and Latinos, once they get the disease, all of the outcomes are worse. Um, the course of the disease is much worse. So although they're less likely to get the disease, they're more likely to die of it in a given year. Give you another example. The risk of heart failure, the cardio study, a large federally funded cardiovascular disease study. African Americans, are 20 times more likely to have heart failure than whites under the age of 50. 20 fold difference, 20 times more likely under the age of 50. Give you another example, major depression. Blacks are less likely to get major depression, but once depressed, depressed blacks are more likely to be chronically or persistently depressed, have higher levels of impairment, have more severe symptoms, and are less likely to receive treatment. So once the disease exists, every outcome is in fact worse. So we have these disparities, we have this earlier onset of disease, some individuals call it weathering, accelerated aging that we see for minority populations. Um, and we also have to understand it in the context of the persistence of these disparities over time. And here is one example of the persistence of these disparities over time. Life expectancy in the United States for blacks and whites, the only two groups for which we have data going back that long, from 1950 to 2006. And what you can see, there's good news in these data. The good news is, is that a gap in 2006 is smaller than it was in 1950. It's a five-year gap in 2006 compared to an about an eight-year gap in 1950. On the other hand, the bad news is there still is a gap in 2006 where there shouldn't be one. With, with all of the advances we have had. But another way of thinking of these data is looking at the life expectancy of whites in 1950 and asking the question, how long did it take for African Americans to catch up to, to achieve the level of health that whites had in 1950? And you can see that it wasn't until 1990, 40 years later, that African Americans had a life expectancy that whites had in 1950. There's a 30 to 40 year gap in all of these comparisons in the table of two groups living in the same society under similar conditions, experiencing very different levels of health outcomes. Now I've talked about the differences in life expectancy, the higher death rates. What does this all translate to? The federal government in 1985 for the first time released